Today we have May's updated tier list for the best and worst brawlers in Brawl Stars. So starting off with 8-Bit, he is a very average brawler. He's very good in Heist and Gem Grab where you can hold control, even Hot Zone, but there are a lot of other game modes and maps where 8-Bit just does really bad. If you don't have position with 8-Bit, it's basically impossible to win, but if you are holding it down and have a good matchup, it's a pretty free win. This brawler has a lot of weaknesses, a lot of strengths, and that's the perfect balance of a brawler. He's going to go right into our B tier. Next up, we have Amber, and we're going to put Amber in the S tier. Amber is one of the best brawlers in the game and really doesn't have that many weaknesses. I would avoid playing Amber in modes like Wipeout, Bounty, and Knockout just because there's a little bit more range in those modes and you want to avoid playing Amber there. Outside of that, the only weakness to Amber is that she doesn't really have a stun, so if something like a Buzz or a Carl goes right beside the Amber, there's not too much you can do about that. Outside of that though, Amber has a ton of good matchups and is good on every single mode besides the one I named, so she is easily going to be in our S tier. I created an insane tier and I think we're going to rock with this for the rest of our tier list. The reason I created this tier is because there are some brawlers that are just a cut above the rest and I want to make sure you guys know the difference between these insane brawlers and these s tier amazing brawlers to start off our insane tier we have angelo angelo i think is the best brawler in the game right now he is just so well-rounded good on literally every single mode good on literally every single map the only weakness to angelo is the new meta so the max and the poco which we're going to get into later is the only weakness if you don't play max or poco into angelo you lost Let's keep going. Next up, we have Ash. And now I want to call this before it happens. I think Ash is going to be insane when he gets his hypercharge. But until then, he's probably going to be in our C tier, B tier, highest, or even F tier. Ash just gets outclassed by a lot of tanks right now, which we're going to cover a little bit later. But he does have his strengths. Once you have that full rage on modes like Brawl Ball or Gem, Ash can actually do a lot of work. But I think without a hypercharge, Ash is going to be a little bit too weak. Next up, we have Barley. And Barley recently got two different buffs. Now, Barley isn't that good still, but he is a little bit more playable right now, so we're going to put him in the B tier. I think he's a perfectly balanced brawler. He has some weaknesses. He has some strengths. I think he's just the middle of the throwers, you know, just doesn't do too well, but also doesn't do too bad. He's a completely average brawler, and you know what? I think that's okay. I like Barley in the B tier. Coming up next, we have B, and I want to be a little bit ahead of the game with these tier lists. I want to predict what's going to happen. Not what's happening right now, but what's going to happen in a week or two weeks, stuff like that, and I think... B is easily an A tier brawler. The reason I have B in the A tier is because we do pro scrims as I am a pro player and my team has a 93% win rate with B. Once my tier list wraps up, you guys are going to see the brawlers that are at the very top of the meta and you guys are going to see how well B plays into basically every single one of those brawlers. Yeah, I understand she didn't get a huge buff or anything, but the brawlers she's playing into now are just so much easier for her style. You guys are going to see I have her in the A tier. Next up, we have Bell, and Bell is going to join Amber in the S tier. Bell recently did get a little bit of a nerf with the hypercharge charge. So I guess that's what you would call it, but she's still one of the best range brawlers in the game. She does heavy damage per second, and also the balance is really good, so brawlers can't be clumped up, and that's really good against tank comps, max comps, you know, just anything like that. Similarly to B, she's one of the best range brawlers when it comes to, you know, dealing a lot of damage. And unfortunately for B, she doesn't have a hypercharge, but Bell does. And ultimately, that's why Bell is going to be in our S tier. Next up, we have BB. And I really want to put BB in my S tier because I think she just absolutely shot up the meta. And I also love playing BB, but we're going to put her in the A tier. Now, BB is really good and her hypercharge only takes six shots to charge. And I know the bubble doesn't do all that much, but the stat buffs to BB, the fact that BB becomes so strong once you have that hypercharge popped, you just can't ignore that. The fact that you can get it pretty easily two, three times a game is also a very big buff for BB. And I just think she's a really good brawler right now. I would not be afraid to try and push her in this current state of the game. Next up, we have Bow, and we're going to put Bow in the C tier. And, you know, I know, believe me, I know how good those Bow mines are, but that's really the only good thing about Bow right now. Not really that good as a range brawler. There's a lot of mid range brawlers that are better than Bow as well. And then all the close range brawlers just do a lot of work to Bow. Now, yes, I know Bo is well-rounded. I know Bo is pretty good. And I'm pretty surprised that I even put Bo in the C tier. Like, Bo actually counters me as a player. But I just think Bo isn't that good right now. Thank God, Supercell, please do not buff Bo. He is going to be in our C tier. Next up, we have Bonnie. And you guys always give me a ton of crap for Bonnie. I don't know why you guys like Bonnie so much. I really don't get it. But she's going to stay in our C tier. Now, the reason she's C tier is because she's so easily exploitable. It's so easy to overpower a Bonnie. For example, Bonnie's in her main form. She can only do 1.8 thousand damage. That's it. So if you're playing BB and you just walk in a straight line and you click your heal gadget, what can a Bonnie ever do to that? Ever. 
And if the Bonnie is in that position, she just has to jump, which she has to get first. But then when she does jump, she only has like one and a half or two tiles worth of range. So every other brawler on the map can work so easily into BB. Next up, we have Brock. And Brock does have similar issues to what BB has when it comes into terms of, you know, getting ran down by a tank. But we're still going to put Brock in the B tier because the damage that Brock could do to a high safe is game changing. Like, yeah, I know Bonnie can also jump onto a safe, but Brock can take three shots and super and do over 30 percent over a third well i know this isn't over a third but he could do over a third to a safe in like five seconds it's unreal on top of that he's also good on jam he's also good on bounty he's also good on wipeout he's also good on knockout like brock is a very good brawler and if you're facing something like a piper or nani you can just go jump brock to counter i mean you don't counter those brawlers if you put on the jump brock but you counter the fact that they counter you so it's like you know a nice little trade-off like brock is a good brawler the higher up in trophies you go, the harder it's going to be to push Brock because more skilled players can juke him easier. But he's going to be a B-tier brawler for me 100%. Next up, we have Bull. And I struggle with where to put Bull, to be honest. I think I'm going to put him in the B-tier because he's just not that good as a tank. But on Heist, he is just an absolute menace. I mean, if you can get Bull on safe, if you can get that hypercharge, you could obviously do crazy stuff. The super and stomper combination is also really insane if you know how to use it properly. My only issue is Bull just isn't that flexible. And a lot of these brawlers at the top of my list, you guys are going to see they're very flexible. You can play them in a lot of different modes, maps, scenarios, etc and Bull just doesn't have that ability. The fact that he's so good on Heist is going to carry him to my B tier, but that's, you know, as high as I'm going to put him. Next up, we have Buster, and man, I would love to put Buster in my A tier. He is one of my favorite brawlers in the game, and he's one of the most well-rounded brawlers in the game, but honestly, he just doesn't have enough right now. We're going to put him in the B tier. He kind of reminds me of Penny and Janet, which we're going to get to a little bit later, where he used to be meta because he had this well-rounded kit. He was good into throwers, he was good into tanks, he was good into mid-range, into long-range. Not saying he was, you know, amazing into all those types of matchups but he can beat all those types of matchups now it just seems like he, he still can but he's just not strong enough as a brawler to do so so he's just fallen off the meta a little bit i'm going to cover this when i talk about janet and penny which i'm going to talk to together at a later point but buster is going to be b tier for me right now next up we have buzz and i mean buzz is simple buzz is going straight to the s tier buzz has one of the best hyper charges in the game you need to have a hyper charge for buzz to be s tier if you don't have the hyper charge put him down to your b tier at least you can play him on like every single mode basically i would obviously probably not play him on knockout or bounty but like to be honest if you're good at buzz you can definitely make it work the fact that you have a hyper charge that's basically a guaranteed super because you just go wall to wall to wall to wall to wall and just you know be right on top of your opponent and just auto him is absolutely insane and i think this is one of if not the best hyper charge in the game right now if buzz had his old hyper charge that wasn't reworked he would definitely be in the insane tier but we're gonna have to hold my boy back and keep him in the s tier for now next up we have byron and this is gonna be a little bit controversial for myself not for you guys but i'm gonna put byron in the a tier now everyone loves byron i'm not that high on him I still think he's pretty weak and doesn't do enough damage right now. And I feel like if you're playing a Byron comp, you know, it's just a little bit weird at the moment. Now, this is a support brawler meta, though, which we're going to cover a little bit later when we get to the better support brawlers. So he's definitely high up in the tier list. I just think I would prefer putting him B, but I'm going to crack on this one and put him on the A tier. You want to play Byron with brawlers that have a lot of damage because Byron doesn't really have a lot of damage. He does have good range, though, and he is very flexible. So that's why he's going to be in our A tier but I don't love him yet. I still think he's a lot worse than BB and B. Next up, we have Carl, and we're also going to put Carl in the A tier. Carl is just really good right now, especially in a draft format. If you're playing ranked and you pick Carl early in draft and someone counters you, you can just put on the fire gadget, which got a massive buff and is actually really good right now. Outside of that, you can actually play him in modes like Knockout and Bounty because most brawlers played there like Angelo, Bell, Nani, Piper, Brock, Throwers, whatever it may be. Carl actually does counter. It's just a little bit difficult because you do have to get your super and you do need to be playing Flying Hook, the gadget, if you want to be effective in those modes. Next up, we have Charlie, and I'm going to put Charlie in the S tier. Now, I'm going to spend this whole time rambling about a theory I have right now. I think Charlie secretly got buffed. Charlie secretly got buffed. Now, Charlie, I think, had eight tiles of range. I might be wrong, and it got nerfed to seven. I'm not sure if I'm 100% right on that, but it's something around those numbers. Charlie doesn't really need that range. As Charlie, you can think of, like, Spike or Tara in a way where it's an anti-tank, and anti-tanks really just don't need that much range. When you miss a shot at eight tiles, that means the shot has to go out eight tiles and then come back eight tiles. 
Now that she got nerfed to only seven tiles of range, you get her shot back faster because it only goes seven tiles instead of eight. And I think that's like actually better for this brawler than the eight tiles. Some people might call me crazy for that take, but I mean, it actually is a buff in my books at least. Like the overall brawler did get worse because there were other nerfs as well. Plus she's been bombarded with nerfs and past balances. But I actually think the fact that she gets her shot faster is definitely a buff. On top of that, she's also super well-rounded, really good brawler. The super is insane, the gadgets are insane, blah, 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 S-tier brawler, 100%. Next up, we have Chester. I'm not wasting any time on this F-tier brawler. Sorry, Chester mains. Now, for Chuck, I'm ignoring literally every single mode besides Heist. If you guys play Chuck anywhere but Heist, just assume it's an F-tier brawler. But for the sake of my list, I'm going to put Chuck in the A-tier. Now, if it was just a Heist list... Chuck would honestly be insane or S, but I need to, you know, understand that there are some other modes in the game, so I have to be somewhat fair. But I'm basically only thinking about Heist right now. You put the poles down, you go in. But yeah, Chuck is just absolutely insane in Heist. You need to push him there. I actually went on a 35-game win streak last night, which is rare for me. I know I'm supposed to be like a pro player, but I barely get above like 6 or 7. And I got my rank 35 Chuck. I think it's super easy. I think you guys should try it. It's in, he's insane to push right now. I definitely would. Next up, we have Colette. And I really want to put Colette in the S tier, but I think she did fall off a little bit. And we're going to put Colette in the A tier. Now, she's definitely an upper A tier brawler and is really good on modes like Hot Zone, Gem Grab, Brawl Ball, and Heist. But I just think she fell off a little bit because of that hypercharge nerf. And we're going to have to put her in the A tier. She's still a really good brawler and a very dynamic brawler, which is really important since, you know, some of the brawlers in the game have hypercharges and some don't. You need to be dynamic in order to be good, which I'm also going to cover a little bit later. Next up, we have Colt. Same thing. A tier easily. One of the best heist brawlers in the game. I would definitely recommend pushing Colt in heist right now. The hypercharge is insane. The reload gadget is insane. The amount of damage you can do so fast with Colt is just unbelievable. He's also good in other modes. I mean, if you can hit shots, but obviously the higher up in trophies you go, the worse Colt gets. So definitely keep that in mind. Next up, we have Cord, and Cord is going to go in our S tier as well. I mean, Cord is the ultimate tank counter. The fact that tanks who get a passive trait of getting hit and get their super don't get that passive trait from Cord is like the craziest thing ever. That just like super hard, just counters, just there's nothing those tanks can do. And I mean, I don't know. Cord is just unbelievable. He is one of the best brawlers in the game easily. There's not too much more to say about Cord. Next up, we have Crow and Lex. You know, I have to bring you up every single time. I feel like I'm talking directly to Lex when I am talk about Crow, to be honest. I don't even know why, because I know there's a bunch of Crow mains and a bunch of you that love Crow. But Crow is going to go in the B tier. I mean, he's just way too average right now. The only, like, really good thing you can do with Crow right now is that hypercharge jump on safe, where you do a bunch of damage. But, like, how many times are you actually doing that when you play Crow? He's just not that good anymore in modes like Gem Grab or Hot Zone where he used to be really good because of his slow. I think it was five seconds long. Now it's like maybe three. I don't even know if it's three seconds at this point. He also doesn't have that much HP. So I think we need a buff for my boy Crow because the game is better when Crow is meta. Next up, we have Daryl. And honestly, I'm just being nice to my boy Sword and putting him in the C tier. But like Daryl could easily be F. I know he recently got a buff, but he's still not good enough at all. And I don't even want to cover him too much. He's basically only good in Heist where I wouldn't even play him. Next up, Doug, same thing, was S tier for like three days, and now he's back in the C tier. I don't think Doug is ever going to be balanced, because that's just, you know, the type of brawler he is. He has literally no range, and that's always going to hold him back. Yeah, you can push Doug. Yeah, you can play him. He's one of the eight brawlers. I don't have rank 35 right now, and I'm struggling to push him. So we're going to see what I can do with the Doug, but... He's just not very good right now. Next up, we have Dinah. And I really want to put Dinah in the S tier. But just because he has so many brawlers that counter him, I'm going to put him at the top of the A tier. I think Dinah is easily the best thrower right now, as you can play him in basically every single mode. And he's just so explosive. I don't mean that as a pun. He can just do so much damage so fast. The fact that you can have four stuns, the super, the hypercharge super, it's just way too much. You give Dinah a good matchup, and it's a free win 100%, especially on Heist. So this is my favorite thrower. He also happens to be the most fun. A tier for my boy Dinah. Next up, we have Edgar, and I'm also going to put Edgar in the A tier. Just another really good, well-rounded brawler. When I say well-rounded, I don't mean as a kit. I mean as in you can play him in Knockout, Bounty, Heist, Gem. You know, you can play him all over the place. I recently started playing Edgar because two of the last three world finals that I played at, I lost on match point to an Edgar, and you know, I was like, you know what? I've had enough. I'm not losing to an Edgar anymore. I am becoming the Edgar main. But yeah, I mean, the hypercharge is just really good. The fact that you can, like, chain jumps is insane, and you feel, like, kind of invincible when you're in that hypercharge. You just have to make sure you're not wasting any jumps, because if you are wasting your jumps, you are definitely hindering yourself as a brawler. 
making herself useless. So it's definitely a very skilled, you know, you have to learn how to actually play the brawler. I'm still learning myself, but if you can play him right, he is easily an A tier brawler. Next up, we have Primo. And honestly, guys, I'm going to work on Primo and Frank together because they suffer from the same stuff. They're just too clumsy. Every other tank outplays them right now. The fact that Primo has a hypercharge, which by the way is easily the worst hypercharge in the game, and is in the F tier, like that says something. If you want to push Primo, get the mutation and push him there because that jump is insane in mutations, but in the normal game mode, I mean, I'm sorry. He's just not good enough and neither is Frank. Next up, we have Ems, and Ems is kind of in a weird spot because I think she should be higher on my list and I'm going to put her because of how the meta is shaping up to be. Kind of, kind of similar to B where like she's really good into high DPS, mid range, crowd control, Control. You're like she's just Ems is good, but unfortunately her kit isn't strong enough right now So although she does get a lot of good matchups these days She's just not strong enough as a brawler to be anywhere above the B tier gem grab brawl ball and heist on Non-range maps are where you want to play Ems. You guys are gonna get a ton of good matchups there next up We have Eve and I'm gonna put Eve in the C tier so I was talking about dynamic brawlers earlier and how there are some brawlers where it feels like you have to play perfect to win and Eve is one of those brawlers Eve is one of those brawlers where let's say you're laning a Colette and let's say you beat the Colette four different times on lane. Each time the Colette hits like three shots. Well, I don't know how much damage you're doing, but by the time a Colette gets a hypercharged super and does 40%, it, like, it doesn't even matter that you killed the Colette four times because the Colette's probably going to be winning the game. If you are going to play Eve, especially on Heist, you need to match it with two high damage brawlers. You can definitely play Eve though on like, you know, bounty, wipeout, modes like that because Eve doesn't really die, but she's also not so good at getting kills. She's like a weird support brawler. And I think she definitely needs a buff. Next up, we have Fang. And Fang is lucky I'm being generous today. I'm going to put Fang in the B tier. Fang was the most insane of insane brawlers when his hypercharge just came out. But his fall from grace has to be studied. He's like Ronaldo. I mean, dude was like the best player, best brawler in the world. And then all of a sudden, World Cup hits and dude is riding the bench. Like, what is Fang even doing? I don't know. It just seems like every brawler right now just counters Fang for whatever reason. And his super is really good. But it feels like it just doesn't do enough right now. I don't want a Fang buff because... Because that hypercharge fang meta was just super annoying. Ronaldo fans, don't get mad at me, but that's the best comparison I had. Next up, we have Gale. And again, similar to M's, similar to B. Very good against crowd control. Good anti-tank. Good against those Poco Max comps. We're going to put Gale in the top of the B tier. But in pro play, Gale is honestly like an S tier brawler. Now, I'm talking about ladder mostly when I'm doing this list. That's why I'm going to put Gale in the B tier. But in the pro scene, Gale is considered the second best anti-tank when I'm talking about hard, hard tank counters besides Cord. The Tornado is really good. The Slow Gale star power is really good. The Stun Gale star power is really good. The Super is really good to blow Brawlers back. I mean, there's just a lot of good stuff about Gale, but he's only good as an anti-tank, so keep that in mind. Next up, we have Gene, and we're actually going to throw Gene in the insane tier. Now, I know I was one of the people who were definitely roasting his hypercharge, and I mean, I still think his hypercharge sucks. The entirety of Europe was watching me do one scrim and I threw so hard by hitting a pole, which is like the craziest thing ever. And I got memed by like seven different pro players. But the fact that a brawler like Gene, which is so good and so well-rounded, now has a hypercharge just elevates him kind of above the rest. It's kind of like the Bell effect where Bell's hypercharge also wasn't that crazy. I mean, it's just like a mark that you're hitting. But the fact that you get the stat buff, the fact that a good brawler also got a hypercharge, I mean, this is what changes brawlers and changes the meta. Just imagine when a brawler like Amber gets a hypercharge, she's going to fly up the list. Even if it's useless, her base kit is just so good that a hypercharge is going to make her insane. Gene has a similar effect, and he's also good on basically every single mode besides like maybe hot zone. So I have Gene in the S or sorry, in the insane tier, and I honestly think he is one of the best brawlers in the game right now. Next up, we have Gray, and again, Gray is one of those brawlers that's really good in competitive brawls. Stars, but on ladder he's just not that good i'm gonna put him in the c tier because he just doesn't do enough damage similarly to brothers like eve and bow and bonnie just single fire not enough damage can get ran down really easily but if you have a synergized team comp and you're playing like doug gray fish on dueling beetles i know some of you guys are doing that then he is obviously way better than c tier but again he's a support brawler so you need a good team comp and you need brawlers that match him if you're playing with randoms, he's just not a good brawler. Next up, we have Griff. And Griff, similarly to M, similarly to Gale, and similarly to B, a very good crowd control brawler. We're going to put him at the top of the B tier. Opening up the map, the super, the shots, the star power that heals. There's just a lot of good stuff about Griff that synergizes well with a lot of other brawlers. And he's easily one of my favorite brawlers in the game. 
I don't have too much to say about Griff. He's just really well-rounded, has some good parts about him, has a couple bad things about him, but that's a perfectly balanced brawler, B tier for sure. Next up, Grom. My boy just has too many weaknesses. We're gonna put him in the C tier. I mean, yeah, he's okay in heist where he can do some damage. Yeah, he's okay in knockout where you're hiding behind a wall, but if you're facing anything aggro, you just automatically lose, so easy C tier for Grom. Gus up next. I'm gonna put him at the top of the C tier, but expect Gus to go up a little bit more. Remember, it is a support brawler meta. He's a very good support brawler. He also got a buff recently with his shield having a knockback, so I think Gus is gonna shoot up. I just think people haven't really figured out exactly how to play him best yet. C tier, but probably B tier soon. That's where I'm gonna put him. Next up, we have the fish, aka Mr. Prawn Ready. Guys, I'm sorry. I'm not prawn ready. I'm not milking up or what, what I don't oiling up. I don't know what you spend viewers enjoy or talk about or do over on that spend channel and i love spend with all my heart but i am not prawn ready fish is gonna go in the c tier and he is not going any higher guys next up we have jackie jackie is easy jackie's been a tier or s tier for the longest amount of time since like lcq and worlds last year which was what november or september October? I don't even know. Jackie's just really good. One of the best tank options in the game and plays really well with a lot of other brawlers. She also counters tanks really good with her counter crush. So yeah, 100% Jackie in the A tier. That's super easy. Next up, we have Janet and I'm going to do Janet and Penny together because they have the same issue and I'm going to put both of them in the F tier. Hold up. Let me find Penny. There she is. Now these brawlers, you can argue, can be C tier, but they are just too weak. Last year, at exactly this time, these two brawlers were literally the two best brawlers in the game. They were so well-rounded. They were good enough into throwers, good enough into range, good enough into tanks, good enough into medium range. Because their kits are very well-rounded, very similarly to Buster. When they get some buffs, and I don't mean little buffs like the one that Janet just got where her super does like 20 more damage. What does that even do? I'm talking like actual buffs, like HP, damage, supercharge, something to well complete her kit, you're going to see them fly up the rankings. Now, brawlers like this are really weird and very hard for a game designer to balance. So like, I totally understand why they always go up, down, up, down, similarly to something like Carl. But both these brawlers do definitely need a buff. They need some love. We all love Penny and Janet. Let's get her those buffs. Next up, we have Jesse, and Jesse is super easy. We're putting Jesse in the S tier, one of the best brawlers in the game. I mean, just look at the brawlers in the S tier right now. Jesse plays really well into Cord, really well into Charlie, decently well into Amber, really well into Jean, and okay ish into Angelo. Like, Jesse is just really good against the other really good brawlers right now, specifically her turret, which just hard counters so many brawlers. You can basically play her anywhere where you're not getting outranged. That's her weakness. If she's landing like a Bell or a Byron or a Piper, I mean, she's just not good into those brawlers. But even then, if you can get a turret and throw it on those brawlers' faces, I mean, that's just a free kill every time. Next up, we have Kit the Cat, and we're putting Bro in the C tier. I mean, in the pro scene, Cat is pretty good, but in ladder, Bro's just not good enough. You need to have a really good team comp to make Cat work. I mean, maybe in Duo Showdown, but we're not talking about Duo Showdown. This is a 3v3 strictly tier list, so C tier for the Cat. Next up, we have Larry, and Larry did kind of fall off a little bit. We're going to put him at the top of the B tier. I mean, thank God. Larry is so annoying. I'm so happy Bro is out of the meta he's not even out of the meta he just isn't the meta so i mean i don't have that much to say you guys know how larry works bro got worse you can now run at larry the bot is still super annoying but what are you gonna do next up we have leon and leon also kind of fell off like larry we're gonna put bro in the b tier i mean he's just not that good right now which is okay because he was good for a little bit but you could definitely still make the hypercharge super you know big play steal all the gem stuff work out all the time it's just he's not good enough anymore without that super for me to put him anywhere but the b tier next up we have lola and i'm gonna put lola in the b tier as well just a really good brawler really well rounded very good with vision gear so if you have lola i would definitely put on the vision gear the clone is one of the most you know unique and best supers in the game if used correctly you can use it as a shield you can use it as a healer you can use it as a body block you can use the you know the gadget in so many different ways really good brawler don't have too much to say about lola as she's just kind of like mid right now but mid is good mid is balanced and that's where she should be next up lou and we're gonna have lou in the c tier i mean if you counter if you're playing primo i mean i'm sure lou's the best brawler in the game but if you're playing anything else besides like a hard tank it's basically impossible to get a lou super these days the hypercharge is really good still, but you're getting like one a game basically at most unless you have a full counter. And if you are countered, you're probably not even getting one. So Lou's going to be C tier. I think he needs a tiny bit of a buff, but I'm kind of okay that he's not meta right now. Next up, we have Macy. Not too much to say about Macy. She needs to get reworked, like completely reworked. F tier, like bottom of F tier for me. Next up, Mandy. Mandy's a really good range brawler. I'm going to put her in the B tier. She's lethal in wipeout, knockout, and bounty. 
not really good anywhere else, but she is a queen in those modes. And if you want to push her, that's where you do it. Next up, we have Max, and we're going to put Max in the insane tier. Like I said, this is a support brawler meta. And like you guys all saw, hopefully from my most recent video, Max's hypercharge is unbelievable. Max's hypercharge just enables everyone else on your team. And it's like having two or three times, I forgot the exact number, the duration of a normal max speed. I mean, it's just absolutely unreal. One of the best brawlers in the game can be played anywhere. It is my team's most picked brawler as of right now in the new meta. And it probably will be for the next couple months moving forward. I love playing Max. If you guys have the hypercharge on Max, or if you guys can get the hypercharge on Max, get it and push Max now. Next up, we have Meg. And Meg is one of those brawlers similarly to Amber that has a really well-rounded kit. And once she gets a hypercharge, is going to be one of the best brawlers in the game. I mean, Meg just has a lot of HP. It's very easy to hit her shots. The whack is really good. Both star powers and both gadgets are really good. Meg is just a really good brawler. I don't have too much to say about her. You could basically play her anywhere, kind of outside of Brawl Ball, but... She's just unreal. Next up, we have Melody, and Melody is one of my top three brawlers in the game right now. She's just unreal. I mean, the fact that you can spawn and be halfway up the map while still having your immunity bubble on you is one of the craziest things we've seen in Brawl Stars. She's also just unbeatable in Heist. If you're facing a Melody in Heist, either put your phone down or target the Melody, because if she gets on your safe, bad things are going to happen. Next up, we have Miko, and to me at least, Miko is like the lesser version of Edgar, so we're going to put Miko in the B tier. You can definitely dominate a game with Miko. The way I see it is if you play five games with Miko, there's going to be two games you get star player and you go like nine and one. And then there's going to be three games where you go 0 and three with like 5,000 damage. That's just the type of brawler Miko is. You just need really good matchups. And that's not the type of brawler I'm going to put at the top of my meta. So B tier for him. Next up, we have Mortis. And Mortis is also going to go in the B tier. But I've recently discovered that Red Bats, I don't know what the... I don't know what the gear is called, but the red Mortis gear is like secretly the most insane thing in the game. I might make a whole YouTube video like dedicated to this, but I actually went from never having a Mortis rank 35 in my seven years of playing Brawl Stars to putting on that gear and being able to do it in a day. Now, if you're a good Mortis player, you probably don't need this. In fact, you don't need this. Keep this gear off. But if you're a bad Mortis player like me, Try it out and see if you could actually win with Mortis because it changed everything for me. Next up, we have Mr. P. And you guys are going to think I'm a psychopath for this, but I'm putting Mr. P in the A tier. The buff to Mr. P was insane. What Mr. P is good at is wasting ammo. And this new Mr. P penguin, like, it moves so fast. Like, so, so, so fast. You're wasting so much of the other team's ammo. It's just so easy to eventually win. Now, it might be a little bit of an overreaction. You know what? Fine. I, you know what? You know what? I'm going to put him in B. It was definitely an overreaction. But I'm telling you, Mr. P is better now. Better now. Try him out. He is kind of a secret, sneaky... I'm not calling him an assassin, but he's like a deadly assassin with those penguins. Like, he's actually really good. Try him out. Next up, we have Nani. And Nani kind of fell off a little bit, to be honest. I'm going to put Nani in the B tier. She feels kind of weak right now, which is good because I hate Nani. Like, I really do hate Nani. I would still say one of the best range brawlers, especially because of the return to center gadget. And there's literally nothing you can do about it. But there's other range brawlers, such as Meg, which is kind of taking over as the top of the range meta. Or Angelo or Belle. And I mean, Nani just doesn't really do good into any of those three brawlers. So, B tier for sure. Next up, we have Nita. And Nita could very easily be in the insane tier. But we're going to put her in the S tier. Because sometimes you just don't get enough hits with Nita. And you just lose. But if you're chaining bears, Nita is unstoppable right now. Especially if you have the stun or the healing or shield. Like, if you have any star power or gadget on Nita which I know a lot of you guys do because it's one of the first brawlers you unlock and level up. She is deadly right now. I would 100% recommend getting the hypercharge. Nita's insane. Even Nita's mutation is insane. I don't know why I thought of saying that, but she shot up the meta and she will not be leaving anytime soon. Next up, we have Otis and Otis is going to go in our clumped up B tier just because, you know, that's where Otis belongs. Good damage, good super, but does also have some weaknesses and that is how a brawler should be. B tier for Otis. Pam is going to go at the very top of my A tier. I feel like I should put Pam a little bit higher, but she definitely does have some weaknesses. Similarly to 8-bit, when you are set up with Pam and you have that healing station down, like you're going to win the game. But if you can't get set up and you're being spawn trapped, Pam is a little bit difficult of a brawler to get out of that spawn trap with and you are kind of feeding some supers. So yeah, A tier for Pam, really well-rounded brawler, really, really good. Would highly recommend getting that mythic gear on her. And once she gets a hypercharge, oh mama, you guys wait. Next up, Pearl. Pearl is going to go at the bottom of our A tier, but still going to be A tier. I mean, Pearl is still really good. One of the better brawlers in the game and has been for a while, but it feels like Pearl fell off a little bit. I don't know exactly why. Very well-rounded brawler can play in literally every single, like I'm talking literally every single mode. And that's why we're going to have Pearl in the A tier. 
but for some reason, I don't know why, I just feel like it fell off a little bit. Next up, we have Piper, and I'm putting Piper in the A tier as well. I mean, Piper deserves to be there. She is, you know, the queen of the range, my favorite range brawler, only just not good when you're playing her into Nani, but if you're playing any range other than Nani and probably Angelo, then you have a good matchup and you should win the game. Completely deadly and knockout, wipeout, and bounty. Works as a gem grab mid, works in brawl ball, even works in hot zone. You know what? Even works in heist. Piper is the go. I love that she's my main. Next up, we have Poco, and Poco's going to the top of the S tier. Just like I said, it is a support brawler meta. The second best, well, I guess third best support brawler for counting Jean as a support is Poco. Poco's heals are just unmatched right now. Both gadgets got a buff, and if you combine that with either, you know, either of the star powers, to be honest, Screeching Solo or the heal, I feel like it's just too much to deal with. I really like Poco. I think Poco is an insane brawler, and I think he is going to stay meta for a really long time. Next up, we have Rico. Rico is also going to go in our S tier, but Supercell, I'm begging you to nerf that gadget. The weakness with Rico in all my time of playing Brawl Stars used to be, you know, you play Edgar, you play Buzz, you grapple onto the Rico, you get right beside the Rico, and then you can beat it. You aren't able to do that normally because Rico can bounce off walls. Rico has good range. Rico has all these, you know, different abilities to kill you at range, to kill you in crazy places places you're supposed to go right beside the rico but now when you're right beside the rico this gadget does like 8 trillion damage and it just like actually makes no sense like honestly i think rico was really poorly designed with the buff to this gadget i don't like what they did to rico at all he used to be one of my favorite brawlers He's still one of my most favorite to play but i just it's it's not i don't like what they did at all i'm really hoping for a little bit of a rework where they completely nerf that gadget to the point where it's not even viable and then buff some other stuff about rico to get rico to the spot where he should be next up we have rosa and rosa is also going to go in our s tier rosa is one of the best brawlers in the game it also got a buff if you guys remember when rosa was one of the best hypercharged brawlers she was literally the best tank and i think she's kind of coming back to that area issue is i'm not going to have a lot of tanks besides rosa and buzz and maybe one or i don't know if i'm going to have one more even in my s tier or above just because if you guys look at my list there's so many good mid-range brawlers so many range brawlers all of them counter tanks all of them are so good against tanks so it's going to be a little bit difficult to have tanks so high up on my list. Next up, we have RT, and RT is the very, very, very tippity top of our B tier. We could put him at like an A minus as well, but we're going to give RT a B plus. He's really good. He like kind of counters Piper, which is weird. He kind of counters Nani, which is weird, but he's not, he's very single fire. Kind of similar to Bonnie, where I feel like RT can get ran down really easily. The gadget change was also really good. I still need to experiment with it a little bit more, but I do think he is easily the top of the B tier. Next up, we have Colonel Ruffs, and unfortunately, he's going to be C tier a very good you know brawler for me i love this brawler i love playing him in pro scene and all of that but he's just not strong enough right now i would like to see a damage buff or even for roughs to get just maybe a supercharge buff or something like that he needs a little bit just to you know get back into shape he's an old dog at this point and he needs to feel young again so let's give him a little bit of a buff and i think he's gonna fly up the meta next up we have sam and sam is gonna go into my b tier kind of like bb where you can just run in and in and in if you have a good matchup with sam you're gonna win if you have a bad matchup with sam you're gonna lose that's how he is and that's why he's perfectly in the middle in my b tier next up we have sandy and sandy is gonna be one of my few brawlers in the insane tier now, Sandy's hypercharge up there with Max is probably the best hypercharge in the game. And the fact that she can get it so fast and just cycle sandstorms, it's unbelievable. Hypercharges that also do a lot for your teammates, like Max and Sandy, just leave such an effect on the game. It is unreal. I would highly recommend playing Sandy, pushing Sandy, getting the hypercharge, doing anything you can right now with Sandy before it gets a nerf. Trust me on this. I think it's going to get a nerf. Push your Sandy. Next up, we have Shelly. And I know the entire continent of Europe loves Shelly but C tier it is for me. One of the best tank counters for sure, but if you're facing anything outside of like seven brawlers, you're probably gonna lose if you're facing Shelly, and that's just not well-rounded enough. Additionally, she's only really good in like brawl ball and like maybe gems, so it's just not well-rounded enough for me whatsoever. She's lucky that she's not F tier, to be honest. Easy C tier for me. Spike, all reliable. Dude is going in the S tier. He's been S tier basically since the start of the game. Sometimes he falls off a little bit, but the damage is too good. The star powers are too good. The gadgets are too good. He's just like kind of been the ultimate reliable tank counter. Never really falls off that hard. And he's going to be an S tier brawler for me. Next up, we have Sprout. And Sprout and Tick, I'm going to place together in the A tier. Now, both these brawlers are the cream of the crop when it comes to throwers in Knockout bounty and wipeout those are the three modes where these two throwers shine 
way above the rest. If you ignore every other mode, these brawlers would be S tier, but unfortunately the other modes do exist, so we're gonna put these brawlers in the A tier. Now you can push Tick if you're playing like mutations very easily, and you can push Sprout with Hypercharge in Heist as well, but the three modes I named are easily and 100% the three modes that you want to play these brawlers in, and that is why they're going in the A tier, because they are so good in those modes. Next up we have Squeak. Guys, I like Squeak. I didn't used to like Squeak. I've kind of turned to the dark side, but... Squeak is an F tier brawler, not enough damage, just not good enough. Next up we have Stu, and Stu again is a weird one. I think of Stu as a support brawler, not a carry brawler, because of the speed gadget, because he just doesn't do enough damage, the fact that you can break walls, like I think you really need to pair Stu with brawlers that work well with him, but I'm still going to put him in the A tier because he is so annoying and so good. If you can get a good matchup and a good team comp for Stu, you can push him really easily as well if you have good Wi-Fi, good you know ping, good connection, Stu is a deadly brawler. But again, low damage. If you're facing a Poco comp or a Max comp, you're probably not going to win. So A tier for me, but it could very easily be B tier. Next up, we have Surge and Tara, in which I'm going to rank together. They're both going in the bottom of the C tier. And I kind of like to group some brawlers together because they just act the same. Both of them are very good, but need to build their way up to being really good. And if you mess up a jump or if you mess up the Tara pull you lose. Both of them are only really viable as well in gem grab and in brawl ball. So I just see them as the same type of brawler, both mid range, both dynamic, but one screw up and you lose. You have to be good at these brawlers to make them work. And if you aren't, just wait for a buff. Finally, we have Willow, which we're going to put in the C tier again, just doesn't do enough damage. Larry, Dinah, Barley, Tick, Sprout, all five of them are just way better than Willow. And you can argue Grom is as well. Just not good enough as a thrower. I would like to see Willow buffed a little bit, but she also works really well as an anti-tank. So in the pro scene, she's actually not so bad. But on ladder, I just don't love her. Now we have the two brawlers that just came out. Well, Draco obviously hasn't come out yet, but I'm going to rank him anyways. Lily, I'm going to put in the top of the C tier. Now, yeah, you can make some crazy plays with Lily. But I'm actually happy that Lily, you know, just isn't a game-breaking brawler. It's nice to have brawlers that come out and don't just completely run the meta. Yeah, I know it might not be as fun to play the new brawler when it comes out. And that's probably why Supercell keeps making such good brawlers on release. But I'm happy that Lily just isn't that good. Her range is horrendous, and that's really the only thing. Her gadget is really good, so if you use her gadget wisely, you can definitely make Lily work and go crazy with her. But yeah, she's just not that good. And if you mess up a super or mess up a gadget, you are screwed. And lastly, we have Draco the Dragon. I have so many funny stories about this brawler and I honestly think my friend came up with this brawler idea. Frank refuses to tell me if I'm right or if I'm wrong but I'm pretty sure my friend came up with this during Worlds. Anyways with that said he's gonna go in the insane tier. I don't care what any YouTuber says guys. Listen to me. Draco is going to be an insane brawler. There's no way a legendary dragon is coming into the game and he's gonna be anything but insane. I don't, I'm not even going to talk about stats or modes. Just think about that and you know he's going to be insane. That's going to be it for my tier list. If you guys enjoyed this video, like, comment, subscribe, all of that. And I will be back again shortly. Until then, peace.